Hi, this is Miles McGuire from the Oshkosh Examiner. Thanks for joining us today as we continue our conversations with the candidates. Uh, today, we're speaking with Beth Wyman, who is running for the Board of Education. And first of all, thanks, Beth, for taking the time to chat. Appreciate it. Thank you for taking the time to have me chat. Appreciate it. And so the first question is this, just kind of a sort of general question, and that is this. How would you be an asset to the board? Well, I think first and foremost, it would be the community relations I have. I know quite a few people in the community, along with a lot of teachers and families of the Oshkosh Area School District. And I would hope that those relationships would let me have uh, open communication and really learn what the people in Oshkosh are thinking. I'm also very vested in the community. I have three children that got great educations here, went away and returned. And now I have two grandchildren that I expect will be going to the Oshkosh Area School District and I certainly wanna make it a district of choice for them. I've been an advocate for the teachers and I understand the history of the Oshkosh Area School District. I know that before we started Oshkosh for Education in 2013, there were 17 years without a strategic plan. And it was the re-engagement of the community in 2013 through Oshkosh for Education that allowed us to have the strategic plan and really begin to focus back on what was important for our district. And what would you say that today, what, what are the top three challenges facing the school district? Well, I think the, the, the top three challenges, certainly number one is the broken culture that we seem to have right now with the teachers, the lack of respect, the lack of trust with um, our administration. And I think it's really important that we reestablish ourselves on a positive district as a positive district, because if we don't, we'll be left in the dust. Families and teachers have too many other choices as far as education and location of where they're going to get their, their education. I think we found out during COVID that um, people can learn in many different ways. They can learn in a school, they can learn virtually. And we need to be sure that if we are going to be the district of choice that we have trust in all of our teachers and uh, certainly engage them and understand that they are at the forefront of all the education of our children. I think that we have a lot of challenges post COVID. We are seeing that we have an achievement gap and certainly a failure rate because of the way that many different children learn. Are they ineffective measuring tools? That's very possible, but we need to get back and reestablish what the, the learning level is for each one of our students. Along with post-COVID, we need to get families back. We've lost many hundred, about 500 uh, students from our district. And not only is that a not a good thing for our community, but it also presents a huge financial loss for the district. When you're talking about $10,000 a student, that is a tremendous shortfall. Yes, we did have some people that came into our district, but we certainly lost more than we had come in. So the net is um, a, a substantial loss. Mm -hmm. We also need to be sure that when our students come back, that we have adequate health care. Uh, that we have adequate mental and social uh, workers to be able to deal with all of the difficulties that they've been going through and understand where they are in, a, in their curriculum, their learning, and we need to be able to have the technology to ensure that each child is going to be able to learn virtually and in school. I, I think we need to continue to talk about our facilities in the district. We need to communicate the long range plan. And, and if there are schools that are going to be closed, we need to not make it a secret that those schools have the potential of being closed. All the things that we've talked about as far as challenges facing the district, I believe, should be talked about in a community coalition. We really need the community back to help move us forward. Education is the most important thing that we do in our community. And we can't just think of our stakeholders as being those families that are currently in the educational system. Our stakeholders are every person that lives, works and plays and learns in the Oshkosh area. What, what inequities do you see in the student experience in Oshkosh schools and how would you go about addressing those inequities? 
Well, I think we see a lot in facilities and yes, it's the building, but it also may be the resources that each school has. We have many neighborhood schools and that presents some challenges and the challenges are that um, the schools are built very differently. Learning is very different today. I'm not saying that we should go to all small schools, but we certainly need to balance the services available to each student uh, to, to the building. Um, there is a long range uh, plan for the district as far as facilities. And we need to continue to communicate that to our uh, community so they understand what the long range plan is. And people will say, yes, it's on the website. That's great, but many people don't even know to go to the website. So we need to continue to have community conversations. Uh, we also have right now kind of a one size fits all education system. I believe that we need more individual learning for each student. Uh, two years ago, we had a relationship with FIRST. Uh, they were an educational resource that put a program together for each individual student. So it was teacher and student individual program. And it's really something that helped move the needle forward in the schools that it was implemented. And especially now with so many students with different needs, it would really help uh, focus on those students that need more time with the teacher and have different learning needs. It also helped on focusing on our black and brown students and our refugee achievement gap, which is substantial. And it's really more than a diversity issue, but it's more of a learning issue. And we need to continue to have open discussions in the community to learn why it's happening and what is, as a community, what we can do about it. And remember that success breeds success and we want all of our children to be successful. The, the next question is really about balance. And you know, for a long time, the, the, the district's vision statement talked about making sure that students are college, career, and community ready. And, and that's not the vision statement exactly now, but it's still part of the strategic plan statement. And so I'm wondering, first of all, do you agree with that vision? And would you propose any changes to how the district goes about carrying it out? Well, I do agree with that statement. And I think it's a wonderful statement because it's really about a well-rounded student. I think many times we, we get so caught up on the college part of it that we don't look at the career part or a continuing education, possibly a tech school. I think we need to continue to partner with Fox Valley Technical College, uh, UWO, and businesses to ensure that our curriculum is relevant. There's been very little said about the exciting thing happening at the Fab Lab at Oshkosh North High School. Uh, Como Meta was really the person that got this going and they reestablished the industrial tech room into now the home of Wave Robotics. Mm -hmm. And it was very exciting to go to an open house and see the carpenters, the electricians, the builders, all people coming together to revamp this area, which really, it, it was kind of funny. Many of the people there said, oh, it looked just like this when I went to school. And that was 30 years ago. And with all of these people coming together to revamp this area, I understand there's also going to be some more fundraising done so it can really be a top notch, first tier technical area. And when you see that, it gets people excited in uh, careers that um, they can learn more about that could be relevant to many of our builders. You look at Oshkosh Corp. Oshkosh Corp has a school at Oshkosh Corp where the, the students go to class for three or four hours and then they get hands-on experience. This is probably the wave of the future to make jobs more relevant and certainly continue to educate our students. And you know, to do this, we need to have top-notch teachers to meet the needs and to have the latest and greatest in all the technology that's going to be needed to go forward. Last question is, is this, what, what is your assessment of the relationship between central administration and the individual district school sites? And, and how would you address any issues that you see there? I, I think at this point, it's a, a very sad state of affairs. There is la lack of trust 
and respect. Um, I decided to run for school board because of a survey that I learned was out there that had happened almost two years before that talked about um, how disappointed the principals were in what was happening with management of the, the school district. And interestingly enough, not much has been done to remedy the situation. And in December, the principals wrote a letter again asking for some of these issues to be resolved. And it was supposed to be done January 25th. And to date, no one has, re has seen any of the results. So it's been very difficult to act on that when we haven't seen the results. Uh, very telling of maybe the disconnect between the board and teachers right now. I was watching the Board of Education meeting on Wednesday. And I don't know if you can see this. But it was, it, it's very interesting because it's about goal number three. And it's about dedicated and high performing team members. And the completion rate is 16%. But when you look at this, the increase of diverse recruiting strategies was at 31% completion. The improved retention rates was at 27%. The cultivate a culture of health and wellness was at 5% and invest in staff is 0%. So you have this district that seems to have some issues connecting with its teachers and staff right now and you present that we are doing more to increase and recruit diverse teachers instead of retaining the teachers that we have. And I think that sends a big message to the teachers that they are not <laughs> valued. And the other interesting part is we're spending time and dollars going to recruit people. But when you look at this, if a teacher, an incoming teacher were to look at this, it says we get you here, but then we really don't make a pro make it a priority to invest in you. And I don't think that's what they meant to say through this, but that's what they said. And I think that that's very, very unfortunate. Um, I certainly want to end this in a positive note. I think that the referendum gave us the perfect opportunity to reinvest or reinvent ourselves and to use it as a reset point to get education back on track in the Oshkosh Area School District. And I hope to make a change. I'm not afraid to make a change. And I ask for your vote on April 6th. Okay. All right, well, thanks very much, Beth. I appreciate it. And um, best of luck to you in, in the election next, next month. Thank you, Miles.